going to be living dinosaurs, Bigfoot and Okapi, the evidence, conjecture, creation, and evolution. And uh, this is always a, a very emotional topic because there's individuals who really cling on to the idea of living dinosaurs and are very defensive about Bigfoot. But what I'd like to start off with is the uh, discussion of the Okapi. Now, this is a discovered animal, but I want to go through the history of the discovery of the Okapi, or Okapia johnstoni, uh, to, to, as a precursor to the discussion about living dinosaurs and, and, and Bigfoot. And the Okapi, uh, it, for those of you who don't know, is in uh, several, uh, uh, several zoos now, uh, actually 160 zoos, um, it has reddish dark uh, back uh, and horizontal white stripes on the front and back uh, on its front and back legs. Uh, the markings resemble a, a zebra, but it looks like kind of a, a combination between a, uh, a deer and a giraffe. It lives in the very dense rainforest of the Congo region, uh, and that's what made it so kind of mysterious and hard to uh, acquire. Uh, it's, uh, it, its body is very similar to a giraffe, uh, but it has a much shorter neck. But one thing that it also has with uh, a giraffe, it has a very long 12-inch blue tongue to strip leaves and buds from trees. So uh, it's a herbivore as well. Now, in getting to the, the distribution, next, yes, uh, the present location is, uh, is identified here in the dark uh, green, and the wider possible extent of its territory is in the blue. And basically what we're looking at here is in the midst of uh, uh, Central Africa or the, or the Congo region, uh, and uh, again making it uh, very hard or, uh, for the early explorers to capture more or less sea. Next slide, please. Here's an example of the Okapi. Uh, uh, again, with the uh, zebra-like stripes, uh, but the, uh, the, the morphology of the animal is like a short-necked giraffe. Here it is from the side. Again, uh, one of the things that's uh, been problem problematic uh, for it is that it uh, previously it had a very high mortality rate. So it was taken to the zoos and they either did not uh, uh, breed or, or it died. Uh, it was very sensitive out of its uh, native habitat. Uh, thankfully, though, uh, the zoo uh, keepers have been able to prolong its life, and the, uh, and the first uh, uh, baby okapi, or juvenile okapi, was birthed uh, somewhere in the midst of the, the 20th century. Now, in a discussion of, of the okapi, the okapi was known uh, to ancient Egyptians and visible in, pic uh, in pictographs uh, in uh, Egyptian uh, context. Uh, however, the, uh, when they uh, had the, uh, after the copy was visible in the, on Egyptian uh, pictographs, uh, the Belgians in Africa, when they uh, began their, their conquest, and I don't want to get into that sordid tale, but uh, they heard of an animal which the African uh, tribesmen uh, called the African unicorn. Also, when Henry Morton Stanley was surveilling the area, he noted that the, uh, the local inhabitants referred to a donkey-like creature called the Ati. So you can see here what we have. We have an archaeological prerequisite. It's visible in archaeological tombs. Uh, we have the natives referring it to as a very real animal and calling it by its own name. And then we have an explorer uh, also recounting this tale and also uh, talking about its qualities. 